Welcome to another beautiful day. This is Say It As It Is With. Oh, before I go any further, I want to welcome my returning, you know, viewers, my returning subscribers. And those of you who would be seeing me for the first time today, I want to welcome each and every one of you to this beautiful day with Say It As It Is With. Oh, if you do not know what I do on this channel, I get to read the blog post stories, the trending news, the breaking news blog post stories. These are stories that have been written on blog posts, okay? These are not stories that I wrote or these are not stories that I, you know, for my own imagination i put them down these are stories from blog posts and i love to read them out to you and sometimes i also get to read you know comments that have been left on this blog post story so let's go over to the blog post story that i will be reading today and it's from premium times and it has a caption nigerian university investigates lecturers who conduct exams in hotels this is a wow <laughs> this is a wonder story conducting of exams in hotels i mean honestly this must have been going on for a period of time for them to be you know conducting a, or carrying out an investigation but it's new to me and i'm sure it will be new to a number of you who will be following me in this read up today but before i read this blog post story this is what i have to say oftentimes we get to hear about you know female students complaining of their lecturers you know asking for sex to get to grade them to give them good grades and i think that to an extent those uh, accusations were not taken seriously it's like you coming to you know report a lecturer that he or she is you know asking for sex so that he or she could give you a certain grade in your examination it's like you're just reporting you know a teacher, uh, sorry, reporting a lecturer and nothing is being done and then you are being victimized. I feel that it's because these things were, you know, not paid enough attention. Lecturers that were, you know, accused or, or not necessarily accused. I think to an extent, le uh, students were even afraid to even, you know, go and report a certain lecturer because they don't want to be victimized. I think that's the thing most students just want to graduate at any cost so when they are being you know assaulted or sexually molested by a lecturer or whatever they keep quiet because they don't want a situation whereby maybe they go and report this case and this case will not be you know given the needed attention then they are being victimized by other lecturers so i feel that's the reason why this situation continues and now because these cases were not reported these cases were not documented these cases were not taken care of so that lecturers would learn from it and also those who refuse to learn from other people's story when they go and assault other students sexually or whatever these students will not be afraid to speak up because somebody had reported a similar case and the case was dealt with the lecturer in question was given the needed or the necessary punishment for their actions or their behaviors and it's because these situations were not you know handled they were not reported they were not given the necessary you know treatment that they needed that is why we are saying today that lecturers can even you know decide to go and conduct exams in hotels because hotels are not places where students should go and con you know carry out an examination hotels are not even places that in the real sense of it a student should be doing should be there doing what hotels are places where people come and lodge hotel is not a university campus so why should students be there let alone going to do or write an examination is because of non-documented cases of sexual assault from lecturers is because of cases whereby maybe a lecturer was also you know reported but nothing was done and that is why it has gravitated towards this level i'm not going to talk too much on this i'm going to read the story and when we're done if you have any comment that you'd love to drop down below concerning this case or any other case the comment section is there for you so let me read the story a nigerian university said it was investigating allegations that some of its lecturers have been conducting examinations for students in hotels. The University of Calabar in Cross River State, Nigeria, South South, on August 10th, issued a memo to the university community saying it was launching an investigation into allegation that its lecturers had resorted to, had resorted to conducting examinations at, at homes and hotels. 
Although the memo did not state why a lecturer would abandon the halls on campus and have students or students sit for exams in hotels, it is believed that sexual and monetary grat gratification may be a prime motive here. Management has information to the effect that lecturers have resorted to giving students scripts to write exams at homes, hotels and relaxation places, said the memo signed by Michael Okom, a professor and the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration, University of Calabar. Mr. Okom in the memo said the university was also investigating allegations of money for grade, otherwise called sorting, and sex for grade, sexual harassment and extortion. Some departments and lecturers have been specifically fingered and investigations have commenced. In fact, they would soon be invited to interact with the disciplinary committee, he said. The deputy vice chancellor warned lecturers to desist and repent from these despicable activities. Florence Obi, a professor of special education special education is the vice chancellor of the university of calabar she was elected vice chancellor in september 2020 the first female to be elected 45 years after the establishment of the university mr okom told premium times saturday that mrs obi's administration has a zero tolerance policy against vices like sorting sex for grade and sexual harassment he said there have been series of complaints from students against some lecturers the vice chancellor Professor Florence Obi has zero tolerance for these vices because even in her inaugural speech, she made it she made it clear that she wasn't going to tolerate them. We don't want that to be mere political statement. We needed to let everyone know that we are very serious about enforcing our zero tolerance policy, he said. He said the university's investigations into the allegations would be thorough and that the school would try and get as much evidence as possible. The results of the investigation would be made public and lecturers who are, who are culpable would be made to face the law, he said. The deputy vice chancellor assured that the identity of students who volunteer information on the allegations would remain concealed. It could even be an anonymous report and we are going to investigate and make sure we get the persons red-handed we will use the DSS. We will use our internal security, he said. Mrs. Obi told Premium Times she doubts if any of the university lecturers would conduct examinations in hotels. She said she has never had, had such a case brought to her attention. She, however, admitted a certain existed in the university. She said she had personally intervened in some cases and forced lecturers to refund money to students. In one or two cases, lecturers have written apologies and they have quietly refunded money that is money taken from students because these students actually sent text messages to me that they were asked to pay for this the lecturers have been cautioned let it be that people know that we are going to be hard on them the one of randy lecturers writing exams in hotels i don't want to say it's true in this my tenure we have rebranded our answer booklet we have customized and serialized them so now we know that serial numbers one to hundred belong to so 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 department it is very inconceivable conceivable for people to go out and write exams and bring in answer booklets. Lecturers are also made to account to all the answer booklets given to them, she said. The vice, chan the vice chancellor said the general studies courses was hitherto plugged by sorting, but that in order to eliminate that, students today write computer-based examinations and their grades are given to them immediately after. The university runs a center for gender development to help students fight sexual harassment within and outside the campus, she said. Certain sex for grade and sexual harassment are not peculiar to the University of Calabar. This newspaper published a report in 2020 detailing how sexual harassment forces students to quit the Nigerian universities. In the report, a female student shared the experience that she had at the Department of Mass Communication Federal Polytechnic offer, which forced her to abandon school to learn how to sew dresses. On this fateful day, we just finished our exam and we were asked to go back home on the same day. He met me at the school gate and offered to give me a lift to Oshogbo from offer. I didn't object because they were two in the car already. When we got to Eringle, the other man came down. When we got to Okuku, he said we have to talk. I questioned him about what we have to talk about again. I even thought it was a bar only for him to drive inside a hotel. He said I should follow him inside and put off his clothes. I started crying. In the room, he was half naked with his socks. I had to tell a lie that I am a virgin and that there is this traditional right a suitor is to undergo in our family before belief before deflowering us. If this, not, if this is not done, anyone who sleeps with us will die.
<laughs> so guys, you've heard the story. It's a good thing that the University of Calabar is, you know, not joking about this. It's not sleeping on this on this issue. And I even like the fact that the prof, the, the vice chancellor, Florence Obi, has, you know, put in, you know, in measure steps that you could help to curtail such such, you know, norms taking place in the university. But you remember that University of Calabar is just one university in Nigeria. What are other universities doing to curtail sex, say, you know, sex for grades or sexual harassment or sorting or all of this? Now we can see the story of this young girl here who had to drop out from school because of sexual harassment from a lecturer in the school. We like what the University of Calabar is doing. We like what the, the vice chancellor is doing. But we pray that other vice chancellors, other schools will also put in place actions and steps that would curtail this sexual harassment, this sex for grades or whatever it is that is, you know, eating deep into the university system. So, guys, what do you have to say about this? Do you commend the University of Calabar, or what is your take on sexual harassment or, you know, sex for grades in our universities? I'd love to hear everything down below in the comment section. And while you're doing that, don't forget that this is Say It As It Is With Oh, where I get to read the trending breaking news blog post stories, and oftentimes I get to read the comments that have been left on them. Till I come your way with another beautiful blog post story, I'll say peace. <laughs>